All right guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today is a track and field video, finally. It's like 30 degrees outside. Welcome to Pennsylvania. So um, if you don't know, uh, my girlfriend and I moved from California back to my hometown of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Um, and now we're gonna be able to focus on making YouTube videos and my company, J Can Fit, full time. So this will be the first video from our new track. Um, this is my high school track. This is where it all went down. This is literally where I started from nothing and um, ended up being one of the best athletes in the history of the state of Pennsylvania in track and field. Um, so if you don't know, I was a five-time state champion um, in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, I've won the 300 hurdles twice. I've won the 110 hurdles. Uh, I was a member of our 4 by one meter relay team. And then we also won the state title uh, my senior year. So a um, lot of good memories here. A lot of like a lot of hard work went down in here. I remember shoveling off lanes of snow uh, just so I could run on the track and um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. But anyway, the topic of this video is um, how to stay healthy uh, in track and field. So I'm gonna give you guys some of my secret tips and some of my best information on how to stay healthy. I ran track for eight, nine years and I never had a single like major injury. I think I rarely even missed a day of practice. I literally might not have ever missed a practice. So um, I'm gonna talk to you guys about how I did that, how, how I was able to stay healthy and how you guys can do that too. So stick around. All right, so <clears throat> with track and field, staying healthy is arguably the number one most important thing that you can do um, in order to run your fastest times. Track is kind of unique in that it's, it's a linear progression. So like you've heard me talk about hopefully a million times on this channel, you, you know, you start out with your base work, you move into speed endurance and then, uh, and then speed training and peaking training towards the end of the season. If you're out for any extended period of time throughout that time, um, you're really gonna be off thrown off and, and if you miss any part of the season you're gonna be thrown off other sports like football basic baseball basketball you know you can get injured and come back into the sport and you know kind of just pick up right where you left off whereas it's not really the case with track and field so you know you really really have to stay healthy if you want to run your fastest times because you really need to be doing your workouts day in and day out okay so <clears throat> let's go over some of the things that you need to be doing in order to stay healthy first thing is you have to be warming up and cooling down properly before every single workout. Even if it's just a distance run on an off day, you have to warm up and you have to cool down. I'm gonna put links in the description below to how to warm up properly and how to cool down properly, including stretches, striders, all that kind of stuff. So make sure that you check those out and make sure you're doing it before every single workout. Um, the next thing is um, overtraining. So a lot of people, I've been asking me, hey, what can I do above and beyond the workouts that I'm doing with my high school team? And most of the time my answer is nothing. Because if your coaches know what they're doing, hopefully they do, um, they should be giving you all of the work that you need to do. And if you go outside of that and do more work, it's a it's a great way to get injured basically because you're gonna be overtraining. Everything that you're doing on the track, in the gym, when you're lifting, when you're running, is breaking your body down. If you're not giving yourself days to recover, then eventually you're just gonna keep breaking yourself down and then eventually you're gonna get an injury, okay? So overtraining is very real, it's a real thing and you have to be very, very careful when it comes to that, okay? The next thing that you need to do in order to stay healthy is run with proper running form, okay? Um, I think this is one of the reasons why I was able to stay so healthy. Yeah, my form's not perfect. I don't use my arms as well as I should. Um, but my, my lower body mechanics are really, really solid. And um, I actually made a video <clears throat> on proper running form. I'm gonna put that in the link in the description as well. Watch that video, learn how to run properly. I've got drills in there that'll teach you how to do that. But as long as, if you're not using your body correctly and you're constantly over striding or you're just, you know, landing heel striking, if you're not using your arms correctly, it's gonna, you're eventually gonna run into injuries, especially when it comes to doing what we do here, which is running constantly and over and over and over again, eventually you're gonna get injured if you're not using correct form. When you're using correct form and you're not over striding and you're using your body's mechanics correctly, it's just gonna go, you're gonna stay healthy basically. I mean, it's gonna drastically reduce your chance of getting injured. So the next thing is your flexibility. 
Um, this really goes hand in hand with proper running form because if you don't have that flexibility, you're not going to be able to be in the right positions to run correctly. So. Um, it, it goes along with warming up and cooling down basically. Uh, you should be stretching every single day. Um, dynamic stretches before your workouts, static stretches after your workouts, and even like at night or in the morning you can do stretches. This is another thing that I was really good about. I was always doing my stretches and I was actually able to do full splits when I was in track, um, especially as a hurdler, and I had almost like complete mobility everywhere. So, um, you know, you, when you're tearing muscles, it's really because of contractions and then just being too tight. Your muscles are too tight and that's when you that's when you tear them, that's when you get hurt. So being as flexible as possible will go a long way in help keeping you injury free. And then the last thing that I will say about um, being healthy is it's in your hands, okay? So <clears throat> one of the things that I used to do um, as an athlete was if something wasn't feeling right, basically, you need to prevent yourself from being injured before it happens. You gotta catch them when they're just the little achy, annoying things, whether it's the bottom of your foot, whether it's shin splints, whether it's your knee hurting, your quad, your hamstrings tight, something like that. You have to pay attention to what your body is telling you, okay? So if something doesn't feel right in your hamstring one day and you're doing a speed workout, maybe back off on the intensity a little bit, you know? It's not something where I say don't run, but you have to kind of police yourself, okay? A lot of people want to blame it on their coaches or blame it on their trainers saying, they told me I could run, they said I could go at 100%. Nobody knows what you're feeling in your body, okay? So you need to start learning the difference between what is muscle soreness, what is tendon soreness, what is, you know, bruising, what is like something like, like pinching a nerve, like you have to kind of start to learn what the differences of all those things are. And I think that's another thing that allowed me to stay healthy is because if something didn't feel right, if my hamstring was tight or my quad felt really weird or you know the bottom of my foot hurt or something, I would always just back off on the intensities. I would still do the workouts, but instead of trying to be in the front of the pack, I would kind of hang back towards the back. I'd let my coach know, hey, something feels a little weird. So I'm just gonna, you know, take, not take it easy, but I'm just gonna back off on the intensity today, okay? Maybe you don't put your spikes on, stay in your flats, stuff like that. So, you know, you really have to, and then another thing is, if things are hurting, go home at night, elevate your feet, you know? If you have shin splints, make sure you're elevating them, you're icing them down, you're, you know, getting massages, if that's something you can help, stretching, like I said. Just those little things are what keep you healthy, okay? And then obviously staying consistent with your training, just hitting the times that you're supposed to hit in workouts. A lot of people will feel really, really good one day and so they just blow workouts out and then they're super sore for the upcoming workouts and then you're kind of setting yourself up for injury, okay? Even in, in um, college, just because I was just, I would just do the workouts, get through them as easily as I could, hitting the times we were supposed to hit. And it's not all about just like hammering every single workout or in the gym, hammering every single workout on the track. It's about just putting in the work, staying consistent, hitting the times you're supposed to hit during that part of the year, and then just getting through the season, okay? Because a lot of people just, hammer workouts too soon or they're hitting every workout at 110 percent and then they don't even make it to the end of the season in college it happened a lot of the time we'd start out with a group of like 12 400 runners and end up with like four of us that were healthy at the end of the season and um it was because we were the ones that were policing ourselves making sure we backed off when stuff hurt and you know knowing when to pick up the pace when we needed to okay so um that's pretty much it when it comes to staying healthy if you guys have comments or questions drop them down in the comment section below um if you know people who have issues with injuries like chronic injuries or things like that show them this video and um i think it'll go a long way in keeping you guys healthy i'll also put a list down below in the description so you can easily see all of these points and yeah stay healthy guys it's the number one thing in track if you're not healthy you can't do the workouts and if you can't do the workouts you're not going to progress so um, it's really that simple so yeah this is our new track uh, this is where we're going to be coming to you from cold cold Pennsylvania Christina's freezing behind the camera right, camera right now but um, we're really really excited we're going to be able to do this full time for you guys and um, I can't wait to help you guys get better and we're going to be training right alongside with you guys so it's going to be incredible Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're new, head on over and check out the track and field playlist. And you can see all of the past videos we've made for track and field. There's a bunch in there and there's a lot more coming. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. It's crazy sometimes thinking you can own a piece of the world. It's just floating through empty space. And now it's yours. So check it out. I actually wasn't here when they put these tracks 
plaques in because I was in California, so I never really got to see them. But um, this is all of the state champions in track and field in the Cumberland Valley history. So you can see like a bunch of the people. Um, and then there's my 300 meter hurdles, 37, 23, 2001. And you can see my 110 hurdles, which was 1468. That was a really slow year for some reason. I think my PR was 143. And then that was my junior year, 300 hurdle. And then you can see a bunch of other people on our team, Dan Austin, Justin Ackery, Pincus, Alex Langen. And Pincus actually uh, was a state champion after me. So um, Cumberland Valley had three years in a row where they won the 300 meter hurdle state champion. That was pretty cool. And then over here we have Cumberland Valley track and field state champions. This is when we won it as an actual school. So 2001 was my senior year and we won first place out of all the teams. So I actually had enough points by myself to win the team title, which is pretty funny. But I was also a member of two relay teams. Our four by one relay was four white boys and we ran the uh, fifth fastest time in the, in the history of Pennsylvania. I'd always thought that was pretty funny. That was the four by four relay where I got the baton in eighth or ninth place. and actually made it to first place and then died at the end which was a pretty epic race. So yeah, it's good to be back. Good memories and uh, I'm excited. Oh.